Okay guys, welcome back to the channel. So in today's video, I'm gonna be showing you how you can upgrade a part that many of you guys always ask me about. Now, when you guys message me, you always ask me, can you code this feature to your BMW? And the answer is yes, you can, if you upgrade this one feature on your car to actually be able to have this and actually change a couple of pins to actually make this work. And I'm gonna be showing you what we're gonna be upgrading today on this Black E60, and I'll show you the feature that many of you guys always ask me if you guys can actually have, and the feature that many of you guys actually want on your cars, especially your older pre-LCI E60s, and it's very, very easy to do, and I'm about to show you how and what you actually need. God damn, get it done, will you? When the blow up now, everybody's so unusual with it. Shit. But said times in his rhymes because his memories. We run into New York, so you know. Okay, guys, so here we are in the black BMW E60. And if you can see right here, we have this module. Now, this module is the LM module. And now, many of you guys ask me for a certain feature if you can have it on your car. And with this module, it's just not the case you actually have to change this module over. Now, a new module is not expensive at all. It is only around 40 quid is what I paid for one, especially if you don't have the AHL. But that new module is gonna give you a feature that many of you guys always ask me for. Now, if you can see here, we've got the two pins. Now, if you remember, I did the LCI retrofit, but this isn't really about the LCI retrofit as such. This is gonna be showing you how to swap the pins, and this is all you have to do on this module um to be able to actually make this work now these two pins are responsible for the angel eyes um and therefore actually coming on because obviously they won't work with the lci lights but these two pins are actually needed if you switch these over on your normal um headlights on your e60 you'll be able to gain this feature because these two pins are needed for the lm2 so you don't actually need these two wires unless you're obviously doing the lci retrofit but you can also just swap these two pins over on this cable just to gain that feature and put in an LM2 module and that's about it. And I'm gonna show you how you do that. This is something BMW don't actually tell you, um, and nobody actually tells you, but when I was actually reading it up and following um, TIS, which is the technical information sheet from BMW and also on it's still on their plans, all the wiring, I actually come across it and actually found it interesting because many people are installing LCI lights to have this feature, but what people actually don't understand is you can actually get this feature by first switching the two cables actually on the LM plug itself and then plugging in the LM module and just coding it. And I was quite surprised when I actually read that. So I'm showing you the pins that you need to switch over. And then, um, yeah guys, if you want to do this, you can actually do it yourself and I'll show you the feature we're going to have. Because these leads are relevant. This is just for the lights I've installed. That's not needed. If I just was to um, change them pins over and I had my old lights on, you'd see it would work exactly the same. But I don't, so unfortunately I am going to be plugging these ones in. But this feature, as I said, will work on E60 pre-LCIs. Okay guys, so what I'm going to go ahead and do is just dismantle this plug, which is just up here, so we're just going to take this out. Um, and then we're going to dismantle this plug right here. So we're just going to have to prise up the locking tabs just like that. And on this side as well, just like that, to slide out our pin connectors right there. So as you can see here, we've got the plugs and what we've got to do here is just change the two pins as I said to you. Now the two pins for this are actually on the back of this block right here and you can see the cables are all bunched together. So you're gonna to have to be careful when you do this. Now we are gonna be taking out pin 40, which is this one right here. And we're also gonna be taking out pin 25 as well. Now pin 25 will be on the blue one. So we're just gonna work our way with pin 40 and take this one out for now. So we're just gonna do that. You can see there it does come out. It is a blue pin, which is the blue cable right here, which we need to pull out, which ain't gonna be easy because if you can see it's tangled in with all these other wires as well. Just like that, we've got that one out. Now pin 40, which is this one, is gonna have to go to pin 11. So what we need to do is find pin 11, which is just here. So we need to try and get this blue cable over round here. And pin 11's on the blue connector, which is this one here, which is blank. So what I need to do here is I need to try and somehow cut this loom a bit just so I can get this one more out because it needs to come to pin 11, which is just over here. So now we've got pin 11. Now we need to stick it in 
to pin 11, which isn't easy at all um, to do. I remember doing this before. And there's not enough room for this one to come. The other one there is, but this one there isn't. If you can see, I'm fighting with it. Just try and get it to push in. Now that's in to pin 11. Now what we've got to do is we need to now move pin 25 to 63. So now we've got to find 25, which will be on the back here, on the blue one. So 24, and which is 25, which is this one right here. And we're just going to push this one out. If you can see this blue one is pulling back out again, we might have to do that last um, because it's just going to keep popping out because it's not fully seated. So now we've got that one, just like that, that green one's out. So now we need to move this one to 63, which 63 should be enough space on there because it's right literally here. So as I said to you, 63 is right here. So all you do is just move it into 63, into the brown block. Very easy, enough room to move it into. Just like that one's in. Now, for this upgrade, this is all you would need to do on your pre-LCI cars. And then you would clip your new LM module, you put your adapter back on, which is your clip, to clip it back into the LM module when that's done. Now, bearing in mind, I'm actually connecting up my LCI ports. So I've got to now install them two wires as well. Now, if you are doing the LCI upgrade, this one will be for you. So you'd get your white and black, which is right here. And you want to go to pin 62. So we're just going to remove pin 62 now, which we do have a spot in there for. So we're just going to push that out. You have to be careful not to pull out other wire that's gone in, just like that. Then we'll put our new wire into 62, just like that. Then we need to connect this one to pin five. Now pin five is on the back here, which we need to get to, which is this one right along here. So this is pin five right here. Now the reason I'm removing these is because these work with the old lights and we don't need them. So we just need to take them out. As you can see, it can be quite difficult to get out. That's why if you separate all the wiring, it should come out a lot easier when you need to pull it out. Just like that. And then what you would do is just run this through here. And just like that, that one's in now. Now the other ones that are pulled out, you can leave them blank because they're the leads for the old um, lights. So we're taking them out because they're going to be blanked. You can see they're exact same colors. You can see they're red and white and black and white. You just take them out and leave them up here out the way because you're not going to no longer need them because they're for the old lighting wiring harness, which you're not using no more. And that's why you reconnect these ones into the proper spaces. So I'm just trying to make them come out the way. We don't want them in the way or to cause a short circuit. We're going to end up wrapping tape around them just to be on the safe side um, because it's not something we do not want. So I will be just moving them up the way and wrapping tape around them at some point. Just make sure all our plugs are in still. Nothing's popped out, especially our blue one, which it has, as you can see. I'm just putting it back in. See there, that's back in. Why you slot all the connector back on. And then what you want to do is just pull them wires out so you can leave them exposed so you'll be able to see them um, and don't mix them up with any of the others. Just cut this off here. These wires need to be covered. Now what we'll do is go and get the module. Now this is our new LM2 module and if you can read on there, it doesn't have the AHL. This is the proper one for this car. The ones with AHL, they say AHL, it usually means for Xenons and this one doesn't have Xenons. I use that one on my M5. This one is not needed um, because it doesn't have that. So do make sure you get the right one for your car, otherwise it won't work properly. So now we'll just go ahead and clip this module in, into place, just like that. Then we need to get our two wires, make sure we don't lose them because I don't want them getting caught in anything. We've got that one right here. They're the ones we need to cover up. Then what we've got to do here is now bolt our module back up top. So once we've got that back in, we can then just bolt it with our eight mil bolt to lock it all in. And all that does is just secure it. And once that's tightened, now what we'll do is we'll move on to the 
programming now. Um, I'm not going to put the plastics back so you guys can get a see of what the feature is. And obviously I'm just going to tidy up these um, cables as well that are hanging. I'm going to put tape around them, blank them off so I can actually tuck them behind here so they don't interfere with anything or like I say, cause a short. So as you can see, they're all taped up. So now what I'm going to do is going to shove them behind here um, where they're meant to go. And we'll, we'll leave them there because you never know if I was to ever sell this and someone wanted to pull it back to normal, they've got the wire in there to actually do that. So I haven't took it out and we've just got our normal wire in here from the, you know, other one, which is the retrofit one, all plugged in here. So that's the retrofit one at least, all plugged in and it's all there. So now, like I said to you, we'll move on to the coding. Um, and that's it guys. Now I'll show you the feature that many of you guys actually want. Okay guys, so as promised, I said you I'd use a scan tool to do this video, and that is what I'm going to do. So as many of you guys know, this is the Launch Creator Elite. You can pick it up for around £100. I will link it in my comments box below, and I will also link it in my description for many of you guys who don't know about this scan tool, who have never seen it. This is a very, very good scan tool, specifically for BMW, Mini, and the Rolls-Royce brand. This can do everything for BMW. If you do have an Audi, Volkswagen, or anything else, you can also buy another Creator Elite that can do all them as well. But this basically has launches BMW software just on this one scan tool and it can basically do everything. Their other powerful scan tools can just with the one software on here. So basically what we're gonna go ahead and do is go into Diagnose and we're just gonna click BMW. If we just click OK, it will connect to the car. And once it's connected, I'll show you how you do all the coding on the car. Now the coding is already pre-done, but I'll show you how you can do it on this Launch Creator Elite, especially if you want to do an LCI retrofit. This is how easy it is to actually do with this scan tool. Now, you won't get it much easier than this, and you're not going to get a better scan tool for the price that can actually do your coding. Now, as I've said many times, this cannot do programming. This can recode modules, this can code, but it cannot program. So if you do need to have a change of in on your module or uh, programming a new module that replacement this will not do that but this can recode your modules if something's out of whack or you know something's not responding correctly and it does come up no cake no coding data error or no coding this is the tool for you this is the tool that can do all that this can also change the fa on your car as well so basically change all your year if you do any retrofit you can retrofit it straight in do all the coding you can do custom coding on it depending on the modules you got do also remember, on the E60s, E63s, if you was to go to BMW today, you would not get an LM1 module. I don't know if many of you guys already knew this, but if you was to go there for a new LM module today, BMW are gonna give you an LM2, which will work with your standard tail lights as standard. So don't think you can get an LM1 because they don't even make them anymore. The only place you'll get an LM1 is online, and I'm gonna be showing you the feature that many of you guys actually want to have on your BMW but actually can't get it and this is the easiest way to actually get it is just to get an LM2 and have this feature. Now what we're going to go ahead and do is go into coding and program and this is the feature that many of you want to be able to see so we'll just click next and if you can see here we've got personalization retrofit we're just going to go into retrofit freedom retrofit and once we go into freedom retrofit you will see here we can do vehicle order change okay okay again it tells you to switch on the ignition, which it already is. And once we get into there, you can see that's all the FA codes we got on the car. Now, if we just click OK, we'll come to here. Now, if you can see here, I've changed the year of my car because I did an LCI upgrade. Now, you can easily do that. If I just click here, you can see there you can input the information. And you just load up. You input the year, and then all you need to do is just enter it right there, and it will change it over. So just click OK on that. You can also see here, um, we've got all different things that are on my car. Now the retrofit, you don't have to add anything else. All you really have to do is change that over and if you are in a different country as well, um, for instance, if you're in the US and you wanna get it correctly working, you just have to basically change this up here. So that's a destination code. So obviously for Europe, you'd wanna change it to MB91, we are NE72, which is basically the UK. Um, and if you've got the US, it will be a different code. I'm not just sure what that one is, but you guys can easily change it from here. You can see here as well, click that, you'll be able to change it. But just for my one, because it's an LCI retrofit I've done, and obviously I've only got the halogen headlights, I just had to change the model year, and then obviously code the LM module, which is the LM2. 
But if you do want to fit the LM2 module, you can easily just fit that. And you can also have the feature I'm going to be showing you right now or what this now car's now got from coding it in. And you can see here how powerful this scan tool actually is. You can see here if I really wanted to, I could add or customize everything I wanted to. So I could click next. And you can see here it will tell me the old one to the new one. Once I've edited anything and just change everything, you can also do battery changes and everything else, but we won't go into everything else it can do because this scan tool is really, really good for the price and nobody can really knock it for a hundred pound. This can do all your coding and recode modules when and if needed. So I know many of you have been waiting to see the feature I was waiting to show you. Well, this is now the feature that you guys can have on your car. And yes, it is possible to do this on the pre-LCIs. I know many people are gonna say it's not, but it is with the correct coding. Now, if you just watch here, you can see there the eyebrows light up. Now the angel eyes are meant to come on, but the bulbs are blown on these ones and that's why they're not coming on. You can also see that side one's on. You can also see my tail lights are on as well. And if I just click the key again, you can see there they come back on. Also the instrument panel comes on as well with the welcome lights. And as I said, the angel eyes would have come on if the bulbs weren't blown. But unfortunately they are. And when I get new ones, I will show you again. But that is the feature you can have also on the pre-LCI. I will upload the coding video for this to the membership on the expert pack. For those of you that want to be able to code this with just an LM2 module for your pre-LCI, it's very, very simple to do. Um, and you just have to tweak a few settings to have this work on your pre-LCI cars as well. But I've managed to find a way of how you guys can actually have it. Obviously, it's not going to be like the original, but it works as good as the welcome light option for um, the LCR ones and I didn't see a problem with it either. So if any of you guys want to do that, that'll be on the membership for you. Okay guys, so as you've seen now, I've now shown you how you can actually code the welcome lights on your pre-LCI BMW E60. Now, as I said to you, there's a lot of people who actually don't speak about the pre-LCI BMW E60s, only the M5s or any car that actually comes with the Xenons. They don't actually say or show you how to actually upgrade the pre-LCI halogens to the LCI halogens and it's a real shame that I've had to actually do this video on YouTube and show you guys how to actually do it all because nobody else wanted to actually do it or they just didn't know how to do it or most people just focus on Xenons, Xenons, Xenons where in fact if you actually upgrade the headlights to the LCI headlights you can actually put LED bulbs in because they've actually got projectors and you can actually alter the current with the LM2 module, the brightness, um, the shutter, you can do a lot of different things on the LM2 module for the lights to not make them blind oncoming traffic even when the projectors. And that's why I'm very surprised nobody's actually took the time to actually show any of you this or tell you about this. And I'm very surprised well people don't tell you that you, any of you can actually upgrade to LM2 to have all the features you actually want. And you can also have the welcome light with your old lights as well. And that's another thing people don't tell you. As I said to you, that video, I'll try and upload the trace file to the membership as well for many of you that want to get it off the expert package. But if you do want to just copy the trace file, I can just make you one and pull it up there for you. And in that way, you guys can actually just pull it on your car and then be happy because you'll be able to have the welcome lights without having to do all this retrofit because I know it's not cheap to do. And I know a lot of people just don't have the time because their only car, having your car off the road for that long is quite a big job. But if you did want to do it, however, I would recommend to do it on like a Sunday, you know, with a bank holiday coming up, take your time and do it like that because it can be quite fiddly, can be quite confusing. And if it's the first time doing something like that, especially with the coding, it can, you know, be a mind bog because many of you won't know how to do it or what not, not to do. And I think that's why my membership will come in handy for a lot of you that actually want to do this retrofit, um, purely because, like I said, this is my second time now doing this on these E60s. Not only have I done it on this, I've done it on the M5. The only one I've got to do now is the E63, which I'm going to be updating and changing them to the LCI side markers, which is gonna be coming up on another video later on. But as I said, guys, I'm very pleased that I've managed to do this. And I know there's many people just don't speak about it for you guys. So I'm glad I took the time out to actually do it um, and show you, you know, these E60s can become as good as all the others that come from the factory. So thank you very much for watching guys. And as I said to you, the video will be on the membership for you guys to go and follow and be able to go and see how to do all this. Thank you very much. It's BMW Dr. Dean here and goodbye.